Thanks for dropping in. This is an old lampshade from my home office. The plastic is starting to crumble and split, but the lamp itself still works fine. So in this video, I'm going to use 3D printing to replace this old shade and save the rest from the trash. First, we need some critical measurements. The shade is about 120 millimeters tall. It's 95 millimeters at the base and 280 at the top. I can tell you now that my printer is not large enough for that, so I'm going to change the top value to 200 millimeters. There's also a 36 millimeter hole for the bulb and a screw on clamp. This hole needs to be pretty accurate because it keeps the shade centered and holds it in place. With those numbers in hand, we can jump to the computer and get to modeling. All right, here we are in Fusion 360. Since the lamp shade is so simple, we could rough out the model using just basic shapes, but I like having more precision when modeling. So let's make a sketch, which will establish the side profile of the model. Starting at the origin of the sketch, we'll draw a vertical line that represents the middle of the shade. Since the shape is symmetrical, we'll only need to draw one half of it. Let's draw a line for the top and another line for the bottom. I'll use horizontal constraints located at the top of the screen here to guarantee that both lines are perfectly horizontal. Now we need an arc that connects the two. The three point arc option works best for this scenario. Just click the end of the top line, then the end of the bottom line, and a third point off to the side somewhere. Now let's use the dimension tool, which is D on your keyboard, to define exactly how long these lines are. The top of the shade was 200 millimeters. I'll enter half of that, since we're only drawing one side of the profile. In the bottom of the shade was 95 millimeters. I'm going to be lazy and type 95 divided by two. Like most CAD software, Fusion 360 will accept simple equations and variables, as well as exact values. Finally, let's set the shade's height, 120 millimeters. Most of the lines in our sketch have turned black, meaning they're fully locked in place. The arc, on the other hand, is still blue. Its radius isn't defined. We want to give it a radius that will look good and will be easy to 3D print. So to be safe, let's draw a guideline at the base of the arc and use the dimension tool to set that to an easily printable 45 degree overhang. Now we can use the tangent constraint to lock the arc to our guideline. Even at its steepest point, the arc will never exceed 45 degrees, and the shade will print without problems. The sketch is now fully defined, so let's hit Finish Sketch and turn this into a three-dimensional object. To do that, we'll use the Revolve tool located in the Create menu. Select the shape or profile that we want to rotate, and then pick the center line as the axis of rotation. Okay, we're getting there, but the lamp is currently solid. To scoop that out, we can use the Shell tool located under the Modify menu. This handy tool hollows out solid objects and leaves the selected side open. Exactly what we need here. Let's click the top of the lamp and then tell Fusion 360 how thick we want the shade's wall to be. I'll set this to 1.6 millimeters, which is exactly four perimeter walls when printing with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Depending on how bright you want your light to look or how translucent your filament is, you may want to set a thicker or thinner wall. Next, let's cut the center hole. While I could use the cylinder tool to punch the hole we need, it's come to my attention that I'm making a YouTube video and people will judge me. So I'm going to do this the proper way and create a new sketch which represents the top view of the shade. In the center of the sketch, we'll add a circle with a 36 millimeter diameter. Next, let's use the extrude tool on that circle to punch the hole we need. That's it, a simple replacement shade. Time to print.
And here it is. I printed this in Protopasta Stratocumulus HTPLA, which has a nice soft gradient to it. While I was at it, I made a few more shades in Inland Pet G. I used the coil tool to carve a thread-like track into this simple cylinder shade. The sweep tool and a curved guide were all I needed to make this scalloped shade. And finally, after a great deal of trial and error, I made another shade with a sweep tool that holds raw filament. This one will be fun to complete with filament scraps over the next few months. There's a lot more that could be done here. Lithographs, weird textures, or multicolor prints. So I'll probably explore some of those options next time the lamp needs an upgrade. If you have your own broken lamp, the files for these are posted for free with all my other designs. If you design your own shade, I'd love to see the results. Until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. I printed this in Protopasta Stratocumulus. Protopasta Stratocumulus. I printed this in Protopasta Stratocumulus. Protopasta Stratocum. And here it is. I printed this in Protopasta Stratocum. Stratocum. Protopasta Stratocum. And here it is. It looks like a cloud.